Penn State football, a tradition of excellence for over 130 years. Welcome to Nittany Nation Rewind. Sometimes all it takes is a spark. A new chapter in the Penn State football program, the Bill O'Brien Air Star. To help a program rise from the ashes. We would have ran into a burning building for him. You're about to take a trip back to Beaver Stadium to remember the team and the times that helped Penn State return to the national stage. It's been a long and hard journey, and it's had, definitely had its ups and downs. We don't give up, and we never gave up. It's been both rough and amazing, and I'm just so happy we were able to come out on this note. You'll find a senior class who could have folded, but instead found something special. I know 84 is not 12 and 0, but it's the closest to 12 and 0 I've ever felt. Nittany Nation Rewind starts right now. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Rewind. I'm Peter Terpstra standing on a double box. Yes, you are. I'm Jack Washer. Welcome back to the show where we bring back memories from your favorite Penn State football seasons. Next up, Peter, is the 2012 Penn State football team that left behind a lasting legacy. Now, things were certainly going to be different heading into this 2012 season. Penn State had its first new coach in 46 seasons when Bill O'Brien took over after serving as the offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots. Plus, you would see names on the back of the jerseys to honor those guys who stuck with the program. Now, before the team could even play a game, they took a loss. Just before the team started fall camp in 2012, the NCAA handed down the following sanctions. A $60 million fine, a four-year bowl ban, 10 fewer scholarships per year for four years. Plus, current players could transfer to any other school and play right away. And then the season started. A new chapter in the Penn State football program, the Bill O'Brien Air starts with the 2012 football season. Penn State looked to begin picking up the pieces left by the sanctions, starting out with Ohio out of the MAC. McLaurin dumps it off to Belton. Touchdown! But a 14-3 halftime lead disappeared. Ohio scored 21 unanswered points in the second half. Huge win for Ohio. And a difficult loss for Penn State. The game flew by and all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, like here we lost. You know, it's like Penn State doesn't lose to Ohio. You know, I respect the heck out of the Mac. A lot of great football players, but like that just shouldn't happen. An opening game loss. That doesn't happen at Penn State, Peter. The atmosphere is different. It's not the same as it was the past four years, and we just didn't look the same on the field. We had uh, middle losing seasons in uh, the middle of the 2000s, and there were still a lot of people in those stands. Reality really set in today for, for a lot of people, including myself. I mean, you got to move forward sometime, and that time is now. Next up, the Nittany Lions headed south to face Virginia, and kicker Sam Ficken had a day to forget. And now 20 missed it again. Still, after the Hoos took their first lead of the game, 17-16, Penn State had one final shot with seconds remaining. 43 yards to win it. He missed it. Virginia wins, and Penn State comes up short. There's like this line of thunderstorms that was coming in, like literally almost as he was kicking, and I think right after kicked and you missed it, it was just a downpour. That's kind of what it feels like, you know, when it rains, it, it actually downpours, you know. Ooh, it did pour. Penn State would bounce back, though. In week three, the Nittany Lions hosted Navy at home, and you saw some life from Penn State. They dominated 34-7, to and the team gave Bill O'Brien an ice bath after his first win as head coach at Penn State. He was just so honest and so so about the game that it just made everything so easy. We all just loved him immediately. We, we bought into everything, and we, we would have ran into a burning building for him. Big Ten play would start on the road at Illinois. After the NCAA sanctions hit, Illinois coaches, along with other schools, showed up to the parking lot outside of the Lash football building to try and convince Penn State players to transfer. If you were looking for motivation, well, Penn State had plenty of that. 
Linebacker Michael Mowdy had two interceptions, including one in the end zone, returned 99 yards to the one yard line. We had good football players on that 2012 team, but we had great people. What was so special about that team is that everybody accepted their role big or small. Speaking of role players, with Silas Red transferring to USC, Zach Swinnick became the future running back. He put up 100 yards on 19 carries with two touchdowns. We definitely knew it was something personal, and, you know, and a shot towards us, you know, so we just took it even personal, you know. Even even everything that's been going on in the offseason with them, you know, coming to camp, you know, trying to, you know, trying to rip the family apart. Penn State wins 35-7. Revenge is sweet. Now Penn State would go on to win its next two games over Northwestern and Iowa, moving to 5-2 and two on the season with the meat of their schedule still in front of them. All right, coming up next, Peter, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, though, especially when the Buckeyes came to town. Plus, the finish that gave you hope for the future of the program. Next. Hey man, I'm down here, Beer Belly's Beverage. Uh, what are you thinking about tonight? How about some Dos Equis? Or oh, hey, how about some good old Bud Light? That's always good for game day. No, how about some Guinness then? Come on, man, I can't name all the beers they've got here. They've got over 500. With over 500 options, we know it's hard to choose. But whatever you're in the mood for, Beer Belly's has the beer for it. Located in Hamilton Square Shopping Center, State College, PA. Introducing Center Boot Company, your new premier boot shop. We're a local family-run business with a passion for boots. Whether it's work, western, hunt, or fashion, we have a style for the entire family. We also offer hassle-free ordering, custom stretching, and a wide variety of accessories. Find us at 380 Phoenix Avenue, Belfont, in front of the Match Factory, or online at centerbootco.com. Center Boot Company, where we believe you got to love your boots. That's right, and we have two great ways for you to find your perfect floor. Come to one of our showrooms where it's like visiting a friend's house. No crowds, no long lines, just friendly, personal service. Or schedule a shop at home appointment and we'll bring the samples to you. Just like before, Stevens Carpet One. Beautiful, made affordable. The Social Security Administration just released a report saying that if a plan like the one Trump is proposing goes into effect, the Social Security Trust Fund would be, and I quote, permanently depleted by the middle of calendar year 2023. Put it plainly, Trump's plan would wipe out Social Security. If I'm your president, we're going to protect Social Security and Medicare. You have my word. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Thank you for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Rewind. Nittany Nation Rewind is proudly presented by Patterson Automotive. You're watching Nittany Nation Rewind. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Rewind. Peter, Penn State had two tough losses to start this season, but the team bounced back. And like any time, Ohio <laughs> State comes to Beaver Stadium, you know the pregame hype was on point. <laughs> Penn State was receiving votes in the AP poll heading into its eighth game against Ohio State. The Buckeyes ranked number nine, even though neither of these teams were eligible for the postseason. Newly named Nittanyville was packed. Just to see uh, all the students come together, uh, supporting the football team. But Braxton Miller was too much. Ohio State won 35 to 23 and ended up going undefeated that year, despite no postseason. We were ready to play, and, and uh, you know, Ohio State came out. They, um, you know, ready to play too. So we had to match that, and we just had to execute. That's what it comes down to in big games. You got to execute. Two weeks later, a trip to Corn Country. Penn State had a 14-point lead at halftime before the number 18 Huskers stormed back and outscored the Lions 26-3 in the second half. A few wins later, Penn State would be 7-4 with one final game at home. Senior day, emotional. The year 2012 unveiled and hanging forever in Beaver Stadium. Penn State welcomed in Wisconsin. 
and six. A ton of time. And a wide open receiver. James. Touchdown, Penn State. The Nittany Lions led by seven late, but Wisconsin tied the game with just 18 seconds to go, sending us to overtime. Kicker Sam Ficking briefly gave the Nittany Lions a three-point lead. Then came Wisconsin's turn to match. They got it down. Penn State wins. I can't even begin to imagine what this feels like. I think the fastest I ever ran on Beaver Stadium was the second my career ended. Right. It's because when we were all down on a knee, waiting for that Wisconsin kid to, to, you know, to kick the ball, and it goes up, and all of a sudden we realize, uh, oh my gosh, like we won. Like just sprinting everybody, like just jumping in each other's arms. It was like, it was, it was a great way to end it. It was almost kind of fitting that we ended it like on our home field, you know, ended that year there, you know, as opposed to somewhere else. What a way to go out for those 2012 seniors. We don't give up, and we never gave up throughout the beginning of the season, from last year, from the off season, to the preseason, to throughout the season when we started off 0-2, no one believed in us. We didn't ever gave up. We just kept chopping away, chopping away, and this was a testament of what we did all year. Man, that was nuts. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at this whole thing, right? The team finished 8-4, and four, and as you know, they were not allowed to go to a bowl game. They lost their first two. They rebounded in a big way, and winning that last game in overtime really gave Penn State something to remember. Now, the NCAA sanctions would be lifted down the line, as you know, and the wins would be restored, and the roar was restored with it. Now, it's been eight years since those guys suited up for Penn State. Now, that's just enough time to start adulting, <laughs> or not. We're still trying to figure that out. Let's take a look at where are they now. First up, quarterback. Matt McGloin. Now, McGloin's got a great story from walk-on to starter, and then he made his way to the NFL. He spent six years in the NFL. He's a free agent currently after a quick stint in the XFL. He hosts a podcast called The Underrated Hour with Matt McGloin back home in Scranton, and he now has a baby boy who is about a year and a half old. It's exciting. It, it really is, you know, being able to watch, you know, your, your son grow up every single day. You know, he's doing new things every single day, he's talking more, he's running around. You know, like I said, he's keeping me in shape. Now for fullback Michael Zordich. He started his career at Penn State as a linebacker and finished as a captain. He has spent the last five years working on a cattle ranch <laughs> and is opening up his own meat processing plant and butcher shop and making me very very hungry. He's following his passion. That's, a, hey, that's an interesting story. What you got to do? Now for linebacker Michael Mowdy, who also has a very interesting story. He had three torn ACLs in two different knees in his time at Penn State. He finished his career as a first team All American and is a fan favorite for his leadership during the 2012 season and leading up to that as well. He's now in the hemp business, marketing <laughs> CBD products, which he says helped him manage pain from his playing days. How about that? Coming up next, we introduce you to a Penn Stater who traveled the world and made a name from behind the lens. Good morning. Oh, hey. You ready to go? Just about. What is all this? Just trying to get organized. Don't you want to help me sort? No, not really. Mm -hmm. Well, at least I don't have to sort through Medicare options. Ah, you got that right. Mm. Truth is, we already know UPMC for Life offers everything we need, like the peace of mind knowing that we'll always have access to the best doctors and hospitals and personal service that makes a real difference. I'll tell you what else makes a real difference. Affordable plan options. UPMC for Life. No other plan stacks up. <laughs> yeah. You're so you saw what I did there, huh? Yeah, you got yeah. it? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Here's the plan for making it easier to find the right Medicare coverage for you. Call today for your free Medicare coverage comparison checklist with no obligation. September is National Recovery Month. Recovery is possible. Blair County Drug and Alcohol Partnership offers a variety of services related to substance abuse, prevention, and treatment. There is hope. You are not alone. Make the call today. 
814-381-0921 or visit our website at www.blairdap.org. It's Caparella Furniture's Labor Day Sale, and we're all about new, new styles, fresh new colors, and now new brands. American-made Smith Brothers Custom Upholstery and Daniel's Amish Handcrafted Bedroom and Dining Furniture, all with savings of up to 50% off in every department store-wide, plus 60-month special financing. And take advantage of extra factory-authorized savings on Bassett and Norwalk Furniture. Get it all at up to 50% off and five years special financing. Hurry in to Caparella Furniture. Thank you for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Rewind. Nittany Nation Rewind is proudly presented by Patterson Automotive. You're watching Nittany Nation Rewind. Welcome back. In 1974, Steve McCurry, a now world-known photographer, graduated from Penn State. Now, he's had a fascinating career, traveling the world and documenting history through his lens. Our Maggie Smolka shows us how McCurry's work lets people connect with the world around them. We live in a world with almost 200 countries, a world with about 7.8 billion people. Think about the different cultures, the different stories. Most of us won't be able to experience it firsthand, so we turn to pictures like these ones to help us see across the globe. So you would say that you have spent most of your time internationally? Oh yeah, I, I, I would say that of my body of work, of my, my photography, probably 95% is uh, outside of the U.S. Steve McCurry is a famous photographer. His work has been seen around the world behind his lens, and oftentimes in risky situations. He documents pictures in hopes of capturing human emotions, images that will connect us all together. How did you get a passion for photography? I started studying a cinematography at Penn State, and from that, that kind of led me to still photography. McCurry learned the basics while working for Penn State's campus newspaper, The Daily Collegian. These clippings show some of his earliest work. About four years after graduating, he got a one-way ticket to India and never looked back. It was his published photographs during the beginnings of the Civil War in Afghanistan that started to get him worldwide recognition. He crossed into the country disguised fully aware his life wasn't guaranteed. You've been through situations where it's very possible that you could lose your life and you go into them knowing like, you know, this is the risk that I'm willing to take. Yeah, in a way I kind of feel like that every time I get on an airplane, <laughs> I think, you know what, this is, this is crazy, <laughs> you know, and I've been on hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of flights. In Yugoslavia, I was in a small plane and we literally crashed into a lake. And I found myself uh, upside down, <laughs> underwater, couldn't breathe. McCurry has been known to capture areas of conflict overseas. But on September 11, 2001, he didn't travel far. From the roof of his building, he captured the World Trade Center collapsing. He would then spend the rest of the day in the middle of Ground Zero. Have you ever been scared for your life? Well, yeah, many times. But I think at, at that point, you have to say to yourself, um, this is a life I've chosen. And I, I couldn't, if I shied away from this situation, I, I couldn't live with myself knowing that, yeah, this was a historic moment that needed to be documented. He'll tell you he thinks of his photos like children. He doesn't have a favorite and loves each one for different reasons. But this image may be what he's best known for. There's a real uh, quality of her in that picture of her not giving up and, and kind of moving forward despite all the adversity that she had to suffer. The world famous portrait first featured on the cover of National Geographic in 1985 
shows an Afghan refugee with piercing green eyes. Did you know that you had something really special? I knew when I made, when I made that exposure that this was something special, but it's such a fleeting moment that you're never quite sure. So I think, it, I think it's, uh, I'm very proud of that picture and uh, something which um, will certainly be the first line in my obituary when I die that Steve McCurry, the photographer who photographed the Afghan girl. <laughs> the world is a big place. And for those of us who can't see it all, we count on people like Steve McCurry who see it through a lens. So we can all be connected beyond our own neighborhoods. In State College, I'm Maggie Smolka. Moving on, you might have spent a little bit more time at home recently, and who knows when that might change. But our guy, Devin Jackson, introduces you to a place that might be even better than going to the game. There will be football play here behind me at Beaver Stadium this season, as we found out last week. However, there will be no fans but that won't stop Brian Harmon and his family from gathering at their Penn State house. Just 10 minutes down the road. When you walk into the Harmon household, every single inch of it is decked out with Penn State memorabilia. The pictures, the cardboard cutouts, to even a Joe Paterno inspired room. Both my kids went to Penn State as well as my wife, so we all bleed blue and white. We built a five bedroom, uh, three and a half bath house to accommodate everybody. Brian became more involved directly with Penn State through his daughter, Jessica, who was on the cheer team. He took pictures before, during, and at major events during the football season, which led to many unique pictures that decorate the walls of the house. Through that venture, I've been able to take some pretty good pictures of on-field activities, a lot of the, you know, obviously the cheerleaders, the lionettes, the mascot. Um, I've gotten to know the mascot quite well, the last six mascots very, very well. Among the PSU decorations lies a family heirloom, a table filled with pictures showing Brian and his wife Marcy's adventures at Penn State and their children's memories too. We have some people in our hometown in New Jersey that do that uh, as, a, as a kind of side business. So we asked them if they could do that for us, and they jumped at it. It's a treasure for us. It's, uh, it's something hopefully will stay in the family for a very, very long time. Brian also told me if fans are not allowed to tailgate outside of Beaver Stadium, his family and friends will do so in the Penn State House. Reporting for Nittany Nation Rewind, I'm Devin Jackson. All right, thanks, Devin. Coming up next, we give you a sneak peek on what to expect next week. At Patterson Automotive, we're under new ownership, new management, and we have a new way of doing business. We're proud to treat our customers and employees the way they should be treated, like family. Come by to see our multiple showrooms and say hello or shop online. Whether you're looking for new and used cars or scheduled maintenance, from sales to service, at Patterson Automotive, you're our Patterson priority. When selecting a rehab facility, you have a choice. Many people choose the rehab unit at Homewood at Martinsburg. We offer private rooms, an on-site restaurant, a styling salon, a brand new gym with new equipment, an outstanding staff ready to provide physical, occupational, and speech therapies up to seven days per week, outpatient therapy for continued improvement at home, and 24-hour physician access and advanced on-site medical support and consultation. Homewood at Martinsburg. Choose excellence in rehab to get you back home. Fall is here and it's time for a change. Not just outdoors, but inside your home as well. Like an updated bath or shower with Bathfitters exclusive seamless wall installed in as little as a day. Call now and receive 0% interest for 24 months on your tub or shower upgrade. There's no reason to wait. Fall into comfort, fall into convenience, fall into savings with Bathfitter. Bathfitter. Colony Realty Group thanks you for 15 years of business. Here is
is one of our featured homes at Colony Realty Group. Top notch two story, three bedroom, 1.5 bath home located at 418 West 1st Street, Holidaysburg, has been completely remodeled. Kitchen offers quartz countertops and new stainless steel appliances, new bath furnace, central air, and much more. Priced at $279,900. Listed by Denise Young. Call Colony Realty Group Limited. Let us be the key to your new home. Thank you for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Rewind. Nittany Nation Rewind is proudly presented by Patterson Automotive. WTAJ Plus. Think of WTAJ Plus as a second TV channel on the web, but we don't do news there. It's new creative shows produced by your favorite local celebrities. WTAJplus.com, airing on your device now. WTAJ, your news leader in Altoona. WTAJplus.com. You're watching Nittany Nation Rewind. Welcome back. We fit on a, a number of different things. How about that photographer? Man, putting your, putting your life at risk to capture those moments. 9-11, of course, the Afghan girl, which he's best known for. But mm -hmm. uh, awesome job. Thank you so much, Maggie Smolka. And I, I encourage everyone to kind of uh, read up a little bit more on him. His travels are extensive in incredible places he got in a plane crash it I mean what it, it, like, exactly like, like it shows how, it shows how many like great people there are at Penn State mm -hmm. and whatnot not just you know football players or athletes and whatnot but they're I mean Steve is just one of dozens hundreds thousands I mean I don't know there's so many yeah. great people at Penn uh, State. Real quick, the 2012 team, obviously what's going to sting is yeah. those first two losses. They could have uh, gone 10-2, 11-1. If they don't blow that lead against Nebraska, if, they, mm -hmm. if Sam Ficken makes one kick, and the ironic part is Sam Ficken, all-time leading scorer at Penn State, had the worst game of his career. I talked mm -hmm. uh, uh, with um, uh, Shane McGregor, who mm -hmm. you saw in uh, one of the pieces, and he's like, yeah, it's so funny how – everything kind of turned around for Sam from that game and whatnot. So, All right, let's, but an awesome season. Let's give you guys a sneak peek of what we're taking on next week. Here's a little uh, something, something. What made us the most angry was when Bob Costas says, congratulations, Tom Osborne, on your first national title. And you're like, you didn't even have a chance to play yet. How are you giving them the national title the night before? That's right. We're turning up the heat with one of college football's best offenses, the 1994 Penn State team that went undefeated but did not take home the national title. We'll take it through that season and try to figure out why the Nittany Lions did not get the ship. Ooh, looking forward to that one. And that was our second episode of Nittany Nation Rewind, so we plan on bringing you more moments from Penn State's past each week. We'll see you later.